G'day, this is Ghost Wolf, and I am really good at two things. Grossly underestimating the number of blocks I'm going to need for a project, and doing things the hard way, because by the time I realize that it's the hard way, I think, eh, I'm almost done, and keep doing it the hard way. So this is, in a manner of speaking, part two of my Iron Farm tutorial. I've watched a couple of Iron Farm tutorials uh, to learn how to do that myself. And they've all been done in creative mode, and they use spawn eggs to get villagers. And they all say, well, if you're on survival, you're going to need to get a villager and just shove them in here. But none of them show the process of getting that villager and shoving them in there. So this video is a little bit on the long side, but I want you to take this journey of pain and embarrassment with me. Let's go. If you remember where we left off last time, I had neglected to build up these pods for the villagers on the sides, which I did fix up, but now we need to get the villagers up there. And the easiest way to do that is with water. So the first thing we have to do is to create a channel that will guide the water down and the villagers up. And I'm just using dirt to do that. Um, any block that's easy to break will be suitable. And that just provides a way so that when you, when you push the villagers into the water stream, they're not going to fall out one of the other sides and wander off. And believe me, they, they wander off. Now, the really important part here, though, is that you want to put the water bucket exactly where the floor is going to be. And there is a reason for this, which we will get to when I actually get some villages in there and I can show you what I'm trying to accomplish. And this is just me messing up the water stream and having to fix it Apparently my brain is uh, moving about the pace of a squid while I try and work that out. So that is the first water elevator dealio done. And you just need to repeat that on the other three pods. Or the other pod if you're only using two. Now that I have my map, minecart and rails, I know that there is a village approximately over there and that's where I'm going to head to appropriate some villages. And here is our first candidate for the Iron Farm pod project. I don't have a lot of gold and because of that, I don't have a lot of powered rails, which made this process a lot harder than it needed to be. 
you'll see that I have used the few power rails that I do have in my possession to get them up that hill. And now that he has travelled so far, all that remains is to push him into that water. Because of the 1.13 water mechanics, uh, a villager who is pushed into water will automatically swim or float directly to the top. And so that's made iron farms a bit easier because you only need to bring your villagers in at ground level. And so this guy has gotten stuck and so I just nudged him back in and now he is in there bobbing up and down on the water. So I repeated the same thing with this guy and the next guy and moved on to the next pod. And for some reason I have this footage of, of this guy who is about to go for a bit of a trip. But I don't have any footage of me going and getting him from down there and putting him where he's supposed to be. So I thought I would go back to this way station that I built and show you the... Not the whole process, because obviously I had to get the villagers to here from their village, but a good portion of the process from start to finish. And normally villagers cannot wait to go through an open gate. I, I don't know, I've opened this gate and they're just standing around and ignoring it. I had... Every time I opened the gate to put a villager in the way station, three of them would immediately attempt to rush out. And now that I want them to do that, they won't. However, I have found that villagers as a whole are fairly contrary types. When you put them in a minecart, they will resist you, and if you're not using powered rails, which, as you know, I haven't, they will push back against your attempts to direct them along the rails. So we're just going to shove this guy in here, nudging up over that bump, and he gets out here. And you'll notice that along the track I've included a lot of these places where it skips a rail. And the reason for that is that the villagers don't have enough speed to jump a gap in the tracks. So if that happens and they start heading in the wrong direction, they aren't going to get quite as far as they would if that gap wasn't there. And like I said, they will fight you every inch of the way. If you can make enough powered rails, I urge you to make as many as you can before attempting this process. Or you'll end up like me. And, I mean, come on, look at this. This is embarrassing. It's worth mentioning that villages are very easy to move over land. And you can move them with nothing more than a door and a dirt block. Or two doors and two dirt blocks would probably be the minimum. All you have to do is remove all the doors in their village, place a single door in the direction that you want them to travel, with a block on top of it. The villagers will detect that as a 
valid door and will congregate towards it because it is the only valid door within range. And so if you chain these, and I tried to keep them maybe 20 or so blocks apart so that the villagers wouldn't have to wander too far. But you can get them over hills and past deserts and all of that very simply. It takes time, but the important factor is that it requires very little materials or effort. You just have to be patient and be willing to lose a villager or two along the way. The problems occur when you have to move them over water, because even when provided with a land bridge, and even if that land bridge is the only place where valid doors exist, your villagers will still congregate on the shore and not approach. And you can bodily shove them into the water and nudge them across until they reach the other side, but it is far simpler. Although watching me do this does not exactly advertise the point. It is still simpler to build a rail and have them in minecarts. But the nudging option is there if you're still in fairly early game. And the whole reason that you're making this iron farm is that you need the iron to make rails and minecarts. So this pod has three villages in it, and I neglected to show this for the first pod, but this is why it is so important to put your water source block in the spot that you want to place the floor. So, if you have a look at where that red circle is, and you'll see how place keeps popping up, that means that I can position a block right there. And if you keep trying, you will catch that magic instant where all of the villagers are bobbing up at the same time. And because you placed that water block in the same location as you're about to put this block, the floor block will replace the water so you don't have to remove it. And you won't have your villagers making that splashy splashy sound that I find to be possibly the single most annoying sound in all of Minecraft. Sorry. That's how you get your villagers up in the pods and you get the pods sealed. And once the pod is sealed then you can remove the dirt that you used and the rails.
And here are our last two villages. Full disclosure, I did lose one villager. One of... I believe it was actually the first villager I attempted to put into a pod. Suffocated. In a similar way to the first villager that you saw that got stuck on that dirt block. And I really just didn't have it in me to go back and get a replacement villager. So in the end, this pod only has two villagers in it. Though I did throw them some bread in case they felt like breeding. But 11 villages is enough. One golem spawns for every 10 villages. So in reality, I have one spare. And the symmetry isn't really thrown off, or at least it hasn't been in a way that I've noticed since I started this farm's production. And you see what I mean about them fighting you? He was so close to hitting that power rail and he came back. They really do not want you to move them around. And I do wish that you could pay them. Like, if you could pay them five emeralds and they'd follow you for 60 seconds and then you could pay them again. And I agree that it doesn't make sense that if you hold an emerald, they would follow you like a cow follows wheat. But if you paid them and you're losing something, so this exchange is costing you something, but if you could pay them to just follow you, life would be so much easier. So that guy just sort of glitched right through those dirt blocks I placed, which is why the dirt blocks are there, because if the dirt blocks weren't there, then you'd break the minecart and the villagers would just head off in random directions. So I've put him in a minecart, I've looped him around, and we're going to have another shot at getting him in there. And he really doesn't want to be in there, and quite frankly, I can't blame him. This is definitely one of the dirty little secrets of Minecraft, where you enslave villagers, trapping them in tiny little rooms in order to farm iron. And he did it again. So, you know, this whole process has just been a nightmare from beginning to end. And all I can say is, sure, just get some villagers and stick them in there. What could go wrong? And now it's raining. So the problem, I believe that the problem that was causing him to go through the dirt blocks was that I wasn't breaking the cart until he was right up against the dirt blocks. So when the game was looking for a block to place that villager on, rather than the block directly beneath him, 
it was defaulting to the next one on the diagonal that was free. Which is why I've changed these rails a tiny bit and apparently I can't jump up one dirt block. But now I can sort of shove him so he's only half in there and hopefully it will work a little bit better. Spoiler, I know it actually works because I already did this and I'm showing it to you now. So he's up there, he took my minecart with him, so I had to go get that back. And that just leaves his friend who is stuck down here on a minecart that has no rail and therefore can't go anywhere. But oh, for the love of blocks, powered rails. Man, I need to hit up some more ocean monuments. I really do. They're in there. Slap down the port so I can see what I'm doing. And then it's generally better not to spam the place button, but to try and time it a little bit so that when you see them bobbing up, and you anticipate the place option appearing. Otherwise you're just going to hit trade way too many times and that'll really slow you down. And there it goes. Water disappears. And get rid of that and clean things up a bit. So this farm has already started working, even though I'm not finished with it. Uh, so I've got eight bars of iron already. And the last thing to do is to cap off the pods with the villagers. And I used glowstone just so that if I wasn't in peaceful mode, there would be light inside the pods and you wouldn't get any zombies, skeletons, or creepers spawning in there. What I all what I did neglect to do, and I have been apparently very neglectful in this build, but is you need to cover all of those open blocks with glass. I realized because I was coming in on the sky rail and I saw a golem standing on top of one of the pods and it and at that point I realized that I'd forgotten to put those glass blocks up there. So don't forget about that because if you aren't near your farm you may not notice that a golem has spawned outside of the um, collection floor. And if you only have 10 villagers and can only spawn one golem at a time, that will stop your farm from working altogether until you do notice it. And so I've just put some legs underneath the collection floor just so it looks a little less unbalanced. Um, there are no slabs or stairs for Diorite yet, so I could have done much better if I'd had those, but I don't. So 
I'm stuck. So, as I showed before, we have eight blocks of iron in there, eight bars of iron. And we're just going to wait to see if something falls through. And here it is, you can see the golem has appeared, it's been pushed into the lava blades. They do take a while to die, golems are very tough. But there he goes, and he dropped four bars of iron. And that is everything from me. This has been Ghostful. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. It's greatly appreciated. Cheers!